it's Margaret with Forward Kind Heart and welcome to Dream Sessions. And this is Dream Session number five. Um, I hope I'm not kind of glitching in and out on my end. It is kind of glitching in and out, but we will make it do. I'm so glad that you're here on this beautiful Monday morning. Okay, so who am I? I am Margaret. I am with Forward Kind Heart. I, um, technical term, I'm a dream analysis. But I like to call it a dream weaver, dream tender, because I feel that our dreams provide us with so much insight uh, from our deepest soul wisdom, as well as messages from ancestors, loved ones, guides, teachers, ascended masters, angels. Just so much information comes to us through our dreams, including past lives and information about current stuff that's going on in our life. So our dreams can really provide us uh, a richer context for our life as well as a lot of um, deep meaning and insight into ourselves to help us grow on our journey as being human. I also specialize in working with empaths. I find that empaths, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gift. However, many empaths feel that it is a curse and they really feel bogged down by the amount of information they receive. So I love empowering empaths to really take the negative and turn it into a positive and really just tap into the beauty, the gift of, you know, helping people but not feeling the burden of helping people. And that's a little bit about who I am. So um, there's two ways to participate. Um, you can come and show up live every Monday morning. Hello, and thank you for watching this morning. Uh, you can show up and watch live in the mornings, and then you can type in your dream, and then I can talk with you about it. Or you can always message it to me, and then I can talk about it during this time. So it, there's really two ways. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our space. I forgot my little thing, so hopefully I can do the little bowl. It was really quiet. I don't know where my little, I don't even know what it's called, whacker. It's probably the wrong term. Light our candle. Set our intention. Give ourselves permission to hear and receive the messages from our dreams. And then as well as setting the intention to receive, to be open to what we here and I always like to give permission because it opens it up. It it's like us allowing ourselves. Um, so that way, if we have resistance, we can acknowledge that. And then the intention: What do we want to get out of this today, this morning? Okay. So we've lighted, we lit our candle, and then we're gonna pull a card. And for those of you that follow Velvet Von Black on Instagram, you know that we've been playing with a new deck. The Jacoli Oracle deck and I got this deck just for working with dreams because it's got this very surreal kind of pop surrealism feel to it and I really um, liked that as well as it's kind of got this dark and light meaning to it which I thought was really fun okay so let's see which card we get I'm just shuffling them hello good morning and thank you for watching okay so, I'm still learning this deck, so this is card number 13. I'll show it to you. And this card is, thank you for your patience, isolation. So, solitude is a valuable and positive part of life, but isolation is soul draining. Taken too far, solitude becomes loneliness and isolation becomes a habit. If you don't share your thoughts and feelings with others, they echo back and forth inside you until you can't turn them off. Only you can break free from the patterns of isolation. If you make it clear you want to be left alone, change the signal you're sending out if you want companionship. So the light side, and that's one reason I got this deck, is because I also love shadow work. So if you've been watching these, you know that I love delving into shadow. And so this deck had um, a light and a dark side. So I really like bringing in the awareness of where we might be blind to our shadow. So I'm going to hold up the card. And the light's meaning is it doesn't have to be all or nothing, all solitude or all society. 
let the right one in and dark. If you always say no to invitations, people will stop asking you. Okay, so that's kind of the card that's going to lead our dream sessions today. Um, and I do have a dream that somebody sent me. Shauna sent me her dream, and so we'll see if I can't weave that card in. And I actually saved it to my phone because I wanted to be able to read what she shared and not, you know, add my own little twist and interpretations. Hello, hi, and thank you for joining. Let me get to her dream. Okay, so her dream is, two nights ago for the first time I can remember, my dream was full of killing, or maybe I should say people in the act of doing things that would kill. It was as though I got that to stop, but there was a woman who was snuffing out dogs and cats. I could see her clearly, but not the animals. I awoke when I heard a cat meowing in my bedroom. I thought the dream didn't I thought dreams did not include killing. PS. I don't have a cat. Okay, so we've got lots of really rich material here. So yes, dreams do include killing. Uh, one of my favorite theories about killing, which makes a lot of sense to me, is when we dream of killing, either we are in the act of killing somebody, and yes, there are dreams where we are dreaming that we're killing somebody, or being killed, or witnessing killing. So one aspect of that is that you are growing, you are evolving, you are changing. And so you are killing off an aspect of yourself that is no longer useful to you, vital to you, integral to you. You know, think about life as we grow and as we change, parts of us change. You know, maybe when we're younger, we're very naive and very accepting. And as we grow, we become a little bit more skeptical. So we might dream that we're killing off that naive part of ourselves. So killing in dreams is very common. It can be really unnerving and really scary. I remember the first time that I dreamt that I killed somebody. I woke up and I it, that dream probably lasted with me for a good couple weeks as I was very unnerved and very disturbed that I dreamt that I killed somebody. But then, you know, working through the process, realizing that the person that I killed was an aspect of myself that no longer served me, that no longer worked for me. So um, that is an aspect. So if you have a dream where you're killing somebody or you're being killed, really take time to look at the characteristics, if you're killing somebody, who are you killing? Why are you hurting them? What do they represent? What do they symbolize? And you can always go back and in your dream journal or on your computer or whatever feels the most natural for you to really start, you know, and have a conversation with the person that you are killing, you know, ask them, why am I killing you? What do you represent? Who are you to me? Likewise, if you dream that you're being killed, you can do the same activity, you know, checking in with the killer. Why are you killing me? Why do you want to hurt me? What do I represent to you? Who are you to me? And really figure out what aspects are being killed. And maybe, you know, a lot of times if we're dreaming we're being killed, it could be that it's an aspect of ourselves that we don't like, that we fear. We could be killing part of our shadow because remember shadow is that part that um, most easily identifiable is in the people that we despise, that we hate, that we judge. That is the easiest way to see your shadow. There's other ways but that's like really if you're judging somebody, if you're reacting negatively to something, that should be the flag right there that you're dealing with your shadow. So you can check in and see if this is in fact part of your shadow. Um, to see if it is shadow another way, a lot of times shadow will manifest so that the character that represents shadow is not looking directly at you. Um, so you'll see the side of their face. Um, they might seem dark or blurred. Uh, so checking in to see, can you see them? Can you see your face? Can you see the face of the person that you're killing? Now in this particular dream, she wasn't killing and she wasn't being killed, but she was witnessing killing. So this leads me, um, my intuition tells me that this dream could be about, 
you know, really the state of society, this collective unconscious that's coming up that is really, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of turmoil. There is a lot of angst and pain and just gritty, not the best right now. Society is not at its best right now. And so I wonder if her subconscious really is wrestling with the state of society, the state of the collective unconsciousness, and killing off the aspects of society that are not serving society. Uh, removing those parts of society that don't serve us. Because she's witnessing it. A lot of times, like, we are witnessing our society right now. And a lot of times we're like, I don't like that. That's not good. I want change. So this dream also indicates to me that change is happening. Change is going on. And that she is active in it because she's trying to stop it. She's trying to change. You know, she's trying to get these people to stop doing what they're doing, which tells me that she is a co-creator. She is working on manifesting and changing what is going on in her life. And a lot of times it might seem daunting or too much. But remember, it's a ripple effect. So if I'm working on me to become a better person, then that kind of filters out and then other people will be affected by me being a better person and then they too in turn become a better person. So that is what this dream, the killing of other people and her trying to stop it tells me is that she's working on becoming a better person, working on, as working on incorporating different aspects of herself to change as well as how she's helping the larger society on a whole. Now there's this woman. And she, I don't, did she say she, I believe she said that she could not see the woman. Let me just double check that fact because I want to make sure that I have it right. So she said, um, there was a woman who was snuffing out. She could not see her clearly. So again, remember, if we, if we can't see somebody clearly, a lot of times that is shadow. So, uh, Shauna, I invite you to really look at um, different shadow aspects of yourself. Um, and you're going to know your shadow the best. So really start with those people that you judge, that you dislike, that you project uh, feelings onto. Feelings that you don't like to feel. Like envy, disgust, um, uncomfortableness. Even people that we are jealous of. Shadow definitely can live where we are jealous of people. So really looking at that. Sorry, I am upstairs and my dog is up here with me. And so she got really excited and I was trying to get her to calm down. Anyways, back to shadow. So shadow really is, um, I kind of wonder if this woman isn't a shadow. So sorry, Shauna, that might be a little disturbing as to why an aspect of you might be snuffing out dogs and cats. And she didn't say kill. She said snuffing. So a lot of times snuffing out leads me to believe that it's hidden, it's secret, that it's kind of sneaky. You know, it's not actively like with a knife or a gun. It's snuffing out, being hidden. Uh, and I don't know because Shauna's not watching. I know she's at work today. So um, Shauna looking at the what the means were and how she was doing it as she's snuffing out these cats and dogs. Now cats and dogs, we dream a lot about animals and I love dreaming about animals and plants because for me that is my, that's nature allies coming to me, offering me some kind of guidance and support. Okay, so, and when I just said that I just realized I didn't go over the crystals that I brought today that are supporting us in this wonderful group. So I will do that after I finish um, that. So whenever you dream of animals, before you run to the dream dictionary, go ahead and look at, do you like dogs? Do you like cats? Is it a dinosaur? Is it a snake? Remember um, one of the few first sessions we had, um, I shared a dream that somebody shared with me about a giant. And so we need to tap into what do we, personally feel about dogs and cats. 
I love dogs and cats. Some people hate them. So what is the relationship to, the, to dogs, to cats? What do you associate with dogs and cats? Are they nice? Are they evil? Are they wicked? Are they friendly? And taking time to kind of see what the dog and the cat symbolize. And then looking at maybe is the lady snuffing out that in the dreamer? Is the lady snuffing that out in life? Is the lady snuffing that out in what aspect? So really turning that into, you know, that action of snuffing out and the characteristics. Now, if um, you look at your personal meaning, yes, then go into the myths, the legends, the beliefs that society have about dogs and cats. And not even your society. You know, look beyond. Because different cultures have different views on animals. And I love bringing that in. Because a lot of times that will tap into something intuitively for me. That I can be like, oh, okay. So this society believes this about dogs. And I totally relate to that. And I can see where that fits into my dreams. Such as, you know, maybe... Shauna, you look at your dream, the lady is snuffing out the dogs, and to you, dogs are loyal, and they represent loyalty. And so, um, to turn that, you know, because you can't see her, so that leads me to believe it's shadow. So then being able to look at that shadow aspect and say, okay, where do I snuff out my loyalty? Where am I not the loyalist of people? Where do I judge people? for not being loyal? Do I expect 100% loyalty from people? And really just looking at all the different aspects of that. Cats, are, um, first thing that comes to mind for cats are that they're very independent. So then looking at, are you too independent? Do you need to be more dependent on the people in your life? Um, is that a problem? You know, a lot of times shadow is that, well, you know, maybe you're too dependent or too independent. So really taking time to look at those aspects. Again, I said that this dream really gave me this feeling of what was going on, a reflection of society at large. And our dreams do do that. They reflect what is going on culturally and environmentally. And like I said, there's a lot of turmoil. And I feel that the dream really reflected the turmoil but also showed this aspect that this turmoil can be contained and controlled and there is a brighter side to it. So thank you, Shauna, for sharing your dream. The crystals that I forgot to share at the beginning, sorry. First one, and I think I shared this a week or two ago maybe, obsidian. I love black obsidian. I actually dreamt of black obsidian. Um, she, in my dream, came to me. And I really don't remember, she really didn't have a lot to say, but I just woke up feeling that I really needed black obsidian. So I got this beauty, and I carry her with me everywhere I go. Um, this is great, because it's really smooth, so if you have anxiety, it's a great crystal just to kind of like rub your fingers on. The other crystal that I use a lot, especially when I'm working from home, working on newsletters or blog posts, is... Selenolite, and I know I just butchered the name, and I just love this spear, um, and it is really great for communication with higher self, guides, um, spirit allies, uh, and black obsidian is very grounding and also very protecting. So those are the crystals. Back to the card and tying that into the dream that we so the isolation card. Okay, so when life is chaotic and crazy, like it sounds like this dream was, we might isolate, we might withdraw, we might try to get away from it. And like the meaning said, too much isolation can be a bad thing because then we start to become disconnected from the people in our lives and society. Too much connection can be overwhelming, especially for empaths, because empaths just feel everything. And I think of this card a lot for empaths. Empaths a lot of times struggle with being involved or not being involved because of everything that they pick up on. So Black Obsidian is a great one for lots of social activities. 
and engagement because it helps keep you grounded. It helps to remind you, you know, that you don't have to take on other people's stuff. And um, so that's for impasse. As far as the dream and isolation, like I was saying, like all this turmoil, all this craziness, people killing people or doing things to kill people, it can cause us to isolate, to retreat. Hello, thank you for watching because we don't want to be involved in that. So we might isolate and withdraw and go into ourselves. And then that can lead to feelings of being alone, despair. And so if you find yourself going into that place, finding those friends you can talk to, those people that you feel safe talking with is a wonderful thing that you can do. And um, looking into your dream, like we were talking about this dream um, where she was witnessing people in the act of killing. Um, were you isolated? Were you engaged? Did you want to isolate? You know, isolation can manifest in our dreams several different ways. And a way to really figure that out is how you felt when you wake up. A lot of times when we dream, we get so into this symbolism and what did it mean, and we forget to tap into the meaning. So, or the feeling, sorry, the feeling. So what was I feeling when I woke up? I felt isolated. I felt ignored. And then turning that into... Do I feel that way in my daily life? Do aspects of myself feel that way? Am I not connecting to my support team the way I need to? And so they're coming through my dream kind of saying, hey, reach out to us. Talk to us. You know, involve us. So that's how isolation can manifest in our dreams as well as our daily life. So I thank you for watching. Remember, um, if you want more dream, delicious, magic, wonderfulness, sign up for my three-day dreaming journey where I take you on a journey to really learn how to connect with your dream space and your imagination because we engage with our imagination outside of dreams all the time. And so how do you connect with that information that comes through during that time? And as well as if you join or sign up for the newsletter, sorry, I've got a head cold, uh, you get access to my Facebook dream group where you can post your dreams and get community support, which I love because a lot of times when we have a dream, we'll come up with some meaning and then somebody else will have another meaning, which just makes it that much richer, just gives you so much more information, which is just wonderful. I mean, our dreams are here to support and guide us and help us on our journey. So again, remember, if you have a dream, I'm here every Monday morning at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. That makes it 1 p.m. Eastern. You can um, write your dream on my Facebook page. You can message me if you're already in the dream group, go ahead and share it there and I might be reaching out to you to ask if you'd like me to share your dream here. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Sweet dreams.